Come to the waters, says the Lord. Though you have no money, come and drink with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Here he So 
May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worthily in the Paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when he had walked off to the east, with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and had me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand and once more had me wade through the water, which was now knee deep. Again, he measured off a thousand and had me wade. The water was up to my waist. Once more, he measured off a thousand but there was now a river through which I could not wade, for the water had risen so high it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district, down upon the Arabah, and empties into the sea, the salt waters, which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish, for wherever this water comes, the sea shall be fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow, their leaves shall not fade, nor shall their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow of the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God. The holy dwelling of the Most High, God is in its midst, it shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Praise and glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ, a clean heart create for me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation. Praise and glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. 
Now there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethsaida, the five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there. He knew that he had been ill for a long time. He said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat, and walked. Now, that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Pick up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. One of the most important things that we can do in our spiritual life is to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus keep our heart and our devotion, everything that is in us fixed on Jesus. And there are many things that can distract us from Jesus. Sometimes when we come to prayer or we come to Mass or we come to church, we might see other people or we might see something happening around us that bothers us or irritates us. I'm not talking about something that would be um, evil or bad, but something that's just not the way that we like it, or somebody that we find irritating, the way they dress or their voice or the way Father is or his speech or his uh, mannerism, whatever it might be, or the way things are done and we find these things irritating. And rather than looking at the Lord, we look at those things. Or even worse, if we come to Mass or to prayer with a critical spirit and we go not to see Jesus, not to encounter Jesus, but to see what we can see, to see if there is anything wrong or if there is anything that we think is out of the norm. When we go to Mass, and God willing, we'll soon be able to go again. When we go to Mass, the Lord wants us to encounter Him. We're not there to encounter something else. We're there to encounter the Lord. We're there to fix our heart and our mind and our gaze on Jesus. And so we have to be conscious and make a deliberate choice both in our prayer, in our Mass, and in our lives, to keep our gaze fixed on Jesus. As we heard in the psalm today, that because God is our refuge and our strength, because He is an ever-present strength in times of distress, it says, 
we fear not. Though the earth be shaken and the mountains plunge into the depths of the sea, with everything that is going on around us, a lot of people are filled with anxiety and fear because of all of this uncertainty that we find ourselves in amid the coronavirus. A lot of us are filled with uncertainty and fear, with everything going on, with all of the changes, with everybody having to be inside and not being able to go out as freely as we were before. And so sometimes we are tempted to be afraid, we are tempted to have anxiety and fear and distress. God is our refuge, God is our strength, God is an ever-present help. And therefore we do not fear, though the earth be shaken and the mountains plunge into the depths of the sea, we will not be shaken. It is the presence of God that gives us his joy and his peace and that removes all fear. As the Lord says in the scripture, perfect love casts all out all fear. Another thing can, that can happen with us when we don't keep our mind and our heart and our gaze fixed on Jesus is we don't see the opportunities that are before us. There was this man who was ill for a very long time. He was lame, lying there, blind, ill, crippled, all of these things. But this man was ill for a long time, 38 years, and Jesus comes to him and he asks him this simple question, do you want to be well? And rather than answering him, yes, I want to be well, what does the man say? He says, Lord, I have no one to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, they believe that then an angel of God would come down and stir the water and the first person into the pool of water would be healed. Do you want to be well? Lord, I have no one to put me into the pool. He should have said, yes, I want to be well. But he was looking at what was the problem. He was looking at his inability. He was looking at his lack. He was looking at the fact that he could not get into the water first. You know, the saints do this in a different way. Whenever the Lord tells a saint to do something, the saint says, okay, Lord. Whenever the Lord tell somebody that's not a saint to do something, they say, I don't have enough money, or I don't have enough time, or I don't really want to do that, or I don't know if I can do that, or I'm not sure if I can do that. You see the difference? The difference is with God, all things are possible. So we may have things that prevent us from getting healed when we look at it through human eyes. We may have things that prevent something from happening or God answering our prayer when we look at it through human eyes. But faith, faith brings into reality what does not exist. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. And the reason why we fail so many times in prayer is because we lack faith or we give up. Now, sometimes we pray for something and it's not something that's good for us or it's not something that the Lord wants us to have. That's happened to me before in my life. I've been praying and the Lord would say, no. But remember that whoever God answers prayer. Every prayer is answered, and everything is grace. Everything is grace. 
We are totally in God's hands. Absolutely everything is a grace. This is what is difficult for us to believe, that God is good and kind and merciful and love and that everything is grace. Because when we face the crucifixion, that's when our faith is tested. Jesus faced the crucifixion. The apostles faced their own crucifixions. And now all of us as followers of Jesus, if we are going to follow him, we follow Jesus Christ crucified. As the Lord said, if any one of you would be my disciple, let him take up his cross and follow me. There is no Christianity without the cross. No following of Jesus without the cross. This place, this earth, is not our heaven. Our heaven is in heaven with the Lord. And so, whatever you are praying for, whatever obstacles you face in your life, or that you are looking for the Lord to answer you, don't look at your inability to do something. Don't look at the things that are blocking you from achieving something. Don't look at the natural things that say that you can't do it. Look to Jesus. Keep your gaze fixed on Jesus. Now, I don't mean that we shouldn't remove any obstacle of sin or anything like that, right? We should love the Lord with all our heart. We should be sincere. Jesus should be our first love. We should be seeking first the kingdom of God. We should seek the Lord with all our heart. But assuming that we are doing that to the best of our ability, then we simply have to keep our gaze fixed on Jesus and trust in him and trust the Lord that however he answers our prayers, he knows what is best for us. Don't look at something and think this is impossible. For God, all things are possible. Trust in him. And especially with regard to the interior spiritual life. If you have fear, anxiety, if you have terror, if you have anger, unforgiveness, hatred, whatever these things might be in your heart, Jesus, look to Jesus and he will set you free from all of them. Allow the Lord to fill you with his love that, so that his perfect love may cast out all fear. God bless you and remember that God loves you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May it, they attest to your care as creator. For this our mortal life and effects in us the healing that brings us immortality through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus, Gloria to Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and all those who hold him to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God, and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the sublation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui Tamundi dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures, where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me.
heavenly sacrament, that we may find help for our bodies now and likewise in times to come through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Grant, O merciful God, that your people may remain always devoted to you and may constantly receive from your kindness whatever is for their good through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Our Lady of Grace, pray for us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saints Joachim and Anne, pray for us. Saints Peter and Paul, pray for us. Saints Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Joan of Arc, pray for us. All holy men and women, pray for us. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in heaven with Jesus, our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven, the blessed, your glory proclaim. children invoke your fair name Ave 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 Maria Ave Ave Maria we pray for our mother the church upon her and bless Holy Mary, the land of our birth. Oh. 